Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about aerobic respiration. We're going to go over an overview and we're going to talk about something called glycolysis and also a part called the prep steps. The first thing that we should know about respiration is that it's actually pretty similar to photosynthesis, only run in reverse. In photosynthesis, we're converting water, carbon dioxide, and ATP into a form of sugar called glucose, and we're also producing oxygen as a byproduct. Respiration is almost exactly the opposite. Instead of converting ATP into glucose, we're starting with glucose and converting it into ATP. We're also using oxygen and converting it into carbon dioxide, and along the way we're going to release some heat and some water vapor as well. So you're going to want to keep these two equations in mind as we go through respiration. Respiration is also different from photosynthesis in that it occurs mostly in the mitochondria of the cell rather than in the chloroplasts. Both plant and animal cells have mitochondria, which is the major site of respiration. So here we can see that we put in glucose and oxygen and we export carbon dioxide, ATP, water, and some heat as a byproduct. There are two main categories of cellular respiration depending on whether or not oxygen is present. We have aerobic respiration, which is more efficient, makes more ATP, and is also sustainable for a long period of time. And we also have anaerobic respiration, where there is no oxygen present. This process is much less efficient, makes much less ATP, and can only be sustained for short periods of time. Here is a slightly more detailed view of the two kinds of respiration. On the right, we have anaerobic respiration, which occurs when there is no oxygen present. On the left, we have aerobic respiration, which occurs when there is oxygen present. Both of these two processes begin with something called glycolysis, which we're going to go into detail about in a couple of minutes. But glycolysis produces two molecules of ATP and then goes into either aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration, depending on whether or not there is oxygen present. If there is no oxygen, you will go into anaerobic respiration. Depending on what kind of organism is respirating, it might produce lactic acid or it might produce alcohol. But in either case, it won't produce any more ATP. In anaerobic respiration, you only produce two ATP molecules per molecule of glucose. All of the production happens during glycolysis. Neither making lactic acid nor making alcohol will generate any more ATP molecules. So you can see that anaerobic respiration is not very good at generating a lot of ATP. Aerobic respiration, on the other hand, is very good at generating large amounts of ATP, although it does have more steps. Just like anaerobic respiration, it begins with glycolysis, where it generates two ATP molecules. Then it goes into what we call the prep steps, and then the Krebs cycle, where it generates two more ATP. Finally, it goes into something called the electron transport chain, where it generates a whopping 34 ATP per molecule of glucose. So the total amount of molecules of ATP for aerobic respiration is something like 38 molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose, whereas anaerobic respiration only makes two. So you can see that aerobic respiration is significantly better at generating ATP than anaerobic respiration is. In this screencast, we're going to talk about the first two portions of aerobic respiration. We're going to talk about glycolysis, and then we're going to discuss the prep steps. We're not going to talk about anaerobic respiration anymore today. Something to be on the lookout for as we discuss respiration is going to be the various kinds of stored energy that are present. You should already be familiar with ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which holds energy stored in its bonds. In this class, we choose to liken ATP to a battery because it can be recharged and reused over and over and over again. There are other kinds of molecules that hold energy in their bonds and form storable energy sources. These include NADH and FADH2. These are all rechargeable, storable forms of energy that can be cashed in later on. Just like ATP, I've drawn these to look like batteries, but different sizes. 
When NADH and FADH2 react with other molecules later on during the respiration process, they will generate ATP molecules, which we'll learn about later on. For now, just remember that anything shaped like a battery is a stored energy source that will be used later on. Just to make sure we don't get confused, don't forget that NADH is not the same as NADPH from photosynthesis. A helpful way to remember this might be to remember that NADPH has the letter P for photosynthesis. So remember, two totally different things. Okay, so now let's get started with glycolysis. We're going to start off by breaking down one molecule of glucose. And remember that glucose has six carbons in it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This six carbon molecule we've broken down into other molecules that will total up to six carbons. It does take some energy to break apart glucose molecules though, which is why we're going to spend two molecules of ATP to break apart this green molecule. When we've broken apart the glucose molecule, instead of one large molecule with six carbons, we now have two smaller molecules, each that have three carbons. This three carbon molecule is called pyruvate. This reaction also has enough energy left to recharge two molecules of NAD+. When we recharged NAD+, we get molecules of NADH, which is the energy-rich form. In addition to producing two pyruvate molecules and two molecules of NADH, this set of reactions called glycolysis will also produce four molecules of ATP. However, because we already spent two of those molecules to get the reaction going, the total number that we've produced after glycolysis is only two ATP. You see a similar concept all the time in business. In order to figure out your profit, you subtract your expenses from your income. You might spend $2 on things like wages or on filling your stock. However, if your customers buy lots of your product, you still will make a profit of $2. This is exactly what we do during the set of reactions that we call glycolysis. We spend 2 ATP in expenses, but we make back 4 ATP in income. This gives us a profit of 2 ATP for every molecule of glucose. Okay, so, so far we have taken a molecule of glucose and we have gone through the process of glycolysis. And so now we're going to take the aerobic pathway and we're going to move on to the next part, which is called the prep steps. Okay, so now on to the prep steps. Now remember, whenever you do the prep steps, this means that you have plenty of oxygen and you're going to undergo aerobic respiration. You don't do the prep steps in anaerobic respiration. We're going to take some of the products of glycolysis and rearrange them in order to be ready for the next step, which is the Krebs cycle. One of the most important things we made during the glycolysis process was two molecules of pyruvate, which each have three carbons. We're now going to add that pyruvate to something called coenzyme A, and also to two more molecules of energy-poor NAD+. A coenzyme also stores energy in its bonds, and it can help enzymes to work more effectively. When we mix all of these things together, we're going to get new molecules, but look out for how we keep the same number of carbons. Once all of these molecules have been rearranged, we come up with two molecules of something called acetyl coenzyme A, or acetyl CoA, which each have two carbons. We also generate two molecules of carbon dioxide, which each have one carbon, and we generate two molecules of NADH, which again is packed with potential energy. So we haven't lost any carbons during this process. In the first place, with pyruvate, we had two sets of three carbons, and then when we rearranged them, we had two sets of two and two sets of one, again for a total of six. We've also now discovered where some of the carbon dioxide comes from during aerobic respiration. We'll be making more later on, but here is where part of it comes from. The last thing that we're going to do before we end this screencast is we're going to tally up the score of how many of each kind of molecule we've created at this point in respiration. So far, we made a total of two molecules of ATP. 
We actually made four, but remember, we spent two of them to get glycolysis going. We made four molecules of NADH, and we haven't made NAFADH2 yet. So that's where we're at. Next time, we'll talk about the Krebs cycle and about the electron transport chain, which is where we really make a lot of ATP.